today on Be Something Wonderful. Create your dream life by mastering the reality mirror. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, good morning and welcome back to the studios of Be Something Wonderful here in Las Vegas. Big video for you today. A wonderful session with this first time client. She's been a subscriber for a while. She says, Tom, I'm ready to master the reality mirror. I'm ready to create the life of my dreams. And she was referring to some videos that I've done, earlier videos, on the teachings of Vadim Zeeland. She had questions on reality transurfing, on the, on the idea of the reality mirror or the dual mirror of reality. So we're going to unpack these ideas today in more. Here's what Vadim Zeeland says. The world literally consents to your thoughts about it. In other words, the world is a mirror. Whatever you're identifying with and as, the world reflects that, right? The, your assumptions, your story, your beliefs, your conceptions, your self-concept is reflected in that dual mirror, your identity. Because remember, reality is your experience of it. The, the true reality, ultimate reality, the I am awareness, that's who you really are. But at any moment in your 3D physical experience, you are experiencing an identity, identifying with some thoughts, feelings, beliefs, or a story about who you are. And that is reflected back as a solid 3D experience or a hologram, reflection or projection. It appears solid, right? But, but really, this is the real you. This is your identity. And that identity is always changing, but it feels solid. The reflection feels solid. It feels real, right? There you are, the true you, always identifying as something, some story, some conception, some beliefs. And then you're surrounded by the mirror. There's a, there's a mirror of reality. Your reflection, remember, it, like, a norm, like in a normal mirror, you're standing in front of it, you're the image and the reflections within the mirror, but this is the other way around in the reality mirror. Your body, who you think you are, all the people, events, and circumstances around you are the reflection of that image within you, that image that you are identifying with. What are you identifying with? Are you identifying as the real you, who you really are, or are you identifying with the reflections out there, there is no out there, but are you identifying with them? Are you looking at your own reflection, your own identity, your own uh, thoughts, feelings, and assumptions, and believing that's who you are? Who and what you are aware of, your I am awareness, that's the pure knowing. The reflections of people, events, and circumstances, thoughts and feelings, are not separate from your awareness. All of that, all of those appearances within your awareness, of changing thoughts and feelings, changing people, events, and circumstances are not separate from your awareness of them. Hear the paradox here. They're not separate from your awareness of them, but they are not your awareness. Just like a movie is not the screen. Who you really are is the screen, untouched by any movies or any projections or any reflections that are reflected on it or shown on it. But you're not separate, just like the movie's not separate from the screen. But it's not the movie. The screen's not the movie. Do you hear it? That's the paradox. We're going to get into this idea today and more. Mirror Principle One. This is in the book Reality Transurfing by Vadim Zeeland, which I've talked about in many earlier videos. I, I highly recommend this book. It's powerful. There, there's, remember, a lot, uh, there's a lot of power in his writings. But remember, it's also coming through a filter of Vadim Zeeland. So, so there might be things that you don't necessarily agree with. That's okay. Remember, it's all coming through a filter. Powerful teachings. The first principle is this. The 3D world is like a mirror that reflects your relationship to it. All the spiritual greats have talked about this idea, right? Your thoughts, your attentions, your assumptions and beliefs, your conceptions or self-concept create the metaphysical image there it is, right? That metaphysical image, that metaphysical image, the, the real you in the metaphysical image that is reflected out there that appears solid and real. 
That appears solid and real, but that's always changing in every moment. You're a new identity, a new version of yourself, a new body, a new version of events in every moment. Both, both the image and reflection are real experiences, but they're not reality. They're real experiences, just like in a mirror. The reflection's real, it's just not reality. Your reality, just like in a normal mirror, right? In 3D reality. Well, the same with the reality mirror. Right? The, 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 the image and the reflection are not real. In other words, they're real experiences. They're real inner and outer experiences. The image you create within is a real inner experience, and the reflection out there is a real outer experience, but they're not reality. Do you see it? It's all an experience of reality. What's real then? What's real? The I am awareness. What's real is you, that I am that true being, that divine being, everything else is changing. And if it changes, it, it can't be real, just like any other reflection. Just as in the 3D or the physical reality mirror, the reality mirror, the reflection is a real reflection, but it's not who you really are, just like in a normal mirror. This is big, you see it here, right? So let's continue. This is why, hear this, Resisting and reacting to 3D circumstances makes no sense. It's your own reflection. You're like a little kitty in front of the mirror, powering at it, at your own reflection. And that's why circumstances don't matter. It's a reflection. You do. You're the one that matters. You are the matter. You create all matter. You're the source of all of it. That's why all spiritual teachers say that. It doesn't matter what those circumstances or conditions look like. They're a reflection, a projection, a hologram of what's going on within you. That's why a self-concept or assumption not filled with love and gratitude makes no sense. Do you see it? Any self-concept or assumption of who you are or of reality, if it's not filled with love and gratitude, then it makes no sense. That's what the feeling of wish fulfilled really means, that feeling and conviction of love and gratitude. Right, imbue that thought, that assumption, that self-concept with that thought of, of love, that feeling, but it's really a conviction of love and gratitude, a conviction of being. Mirror Principle 2 says that, says this, <laughs> says that, says this. The reflection is formed in the unity of heart and mind. One of, one of the most important uh, principles, right? In other words, the feeling of wish fulfilled Emotion, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's thought plus emotion, thought plus source energy, thought plus the, plus the, and remember, there's only one energy, and that's love. But if that thought is a fearful thought or a thought of something that's not true of who you are, that energy then feels like fear. It feels negative. So fill it with love and gratitude. The feeling of wish fulfilled means fill it with love and gratitude. Because that emotion, that your heart, is filled as source energy. That's the real you. Unity equals conviction. Right? The thought, assumption, the self-concept, your end. Fill that with love, gratitude, and unity. That's what that really means. It creates the electromagnetic image. Right? Heart, remember, the, the uh, electro is thought, magnetic is heart, right? Heart, heart plus mind, that image of the other side of the mirror that coalesces or forms your physical experience. That's that idea that that thought and feeling or that thought and emotion, that thought with love and gratitude forms or coalesces that image, that electromagnetic image on the other side of the mirror. And that's what you experience, and that's what coalesces into a physical 3D experience. So let's continue with this. We've talked about these ideas. Remember, resisting, rejecting, not believing it's possible, fear and aversion also creates the unity of heart and mind. It also creates an immediate alignment of thought and emotion, or the, other, the, the idea of a fearful thought feeling the emotion of it, but around unwanted realities or unwanted identities, right? A clear metaphysical image, a sharp image of what you don't prefer. 
That's why people always say, I, I don't understand why my, my greatest fear manifested. Because you have a perfect alignment or unity of heart and mind, right? It might not be what you prefer, but it's what you were focusing on. It's what you were feeling real, right? You're feeling that conviction as real. Right? That's what we're talking about there. Then there's mirror principle three. There is a delay in the reflection of the dual mirror. Now, Vadim Zeeland is making a concession to the idea of a delay. We've talked about that there's no delays, that you are reality, that that image is instantly reflected out there at all times, that, that you're always manifesting what's going on within you instantly. But to make a concession here, remember, you create the experience of the delay, right? Remember, you are the mirror. You are the slide or reality. So that delay is within you. The reflection is instant. It's instant. But your recognition, your realization, or change within, or your experience appears to take time. Do you see it? That change within you appears to take time. That's why Vadim Zeeland says you have to run the slide in your mind systematically for a significant period of time. Again, his beliefs, but it's based on what he, what, that idea that we create an experience in time and space. That's what he's pointing to. He's making a concession to that idea. When he talks about running the slide, what is he talking about? He's talking about your imaginal act, your imaginal scene, your imaginal frame of reality, your ideal, your self-concept. What you see as reality, there's the frame, right? Or that image, like a frame of reality or a slide, like a movie projector, a slide or a frame, right? In other words, go, but what's he really saying? In other words, go to the end and stay there. Be the identity through whom and from whom it is real, right? Through whom and from whom it's real. Make that your reality, right? For whom and through whom that your reality is real. Be that identity, right? Remember, yes, the idea of a delay, but there is no delay. You're instantly always reflecting who you're being. So where's the quote delay? It's your experience. It's whatever you're experiencing, your realization, your recognition of, of making that reality real for you. Understanding that the, it's based on your conviction within that for whom and through whom that reality is real, right? And yes, you get there by affirming, you get there by imagining that scene, you get there by returning to that assumption, returning to that end, for sure, for sure. So there it is, there, there, you've seen this before. There's the real you, the I am awareness, the divine you, who you really are. There's the slide that I've referred to as the son of man. Right? The Son of God, the Son of Man. That's the image that you get to create. The question is, where are you taking your cues from? Are you taking it from who you really are and what you imagine yourself to be or from the temporary reflections that appear to be out there? What are you creating from? This is the true thought and feeling or emotion of source. And these are the thoughts and emotions created from looking out at the reflection. This is the dual mirror, right? That, that metaphysical image and the reflected image, what appears solid to you, is the reflection. But it's always changing. You see here the dotted lines. It's always changing, that image. That's the dual mirror. That's the reflection. But who you really are never changes. The screen never changes. The movies change. The characters, the actors, they all change. But the screen never changes. The screen's never touched by the movie or the projections or the reflections. Just like the real you never is touched. But in that present frame, in that image, you're cre creating experiences that are changing. You're creating a, a, a different horizontal past experience, a different horizontal future. But light up that frame of what your desired future is, right? Light that up, create that image of what you want. The reflection is changing instantly. Past, present, and future. While you experience it as change in time and space, or what we call a delay. Right? Zeeland talks about creating your own reality mirror amalgam. He talks about the idea of the Venetians creating these mirrors that were lined with a composite of gold that made the reflections warmer and more beautiful. 
That's what he's saying here. So create your hue of reality. Create your reflection that appears warmer and, and more beautiful. Right? Like the Venetian mirrors, lines with the gold, composite, that made the reflection. Or, or in other, other words, the hue of reality look warmer or more attractive. He talks about this in Reality Transurfing. In other words, he gives some examples of uh, amalgams. Everything always works out for me. Everything is unfolding perfectly was one of mine that, that, um, uh, that I've used before. Or the world takes care of me. That was one of his, right? Lester Levinson always says that everything is perfect. I love that one. Right? Everything's working out for me as, as maybe Abraham Hicks and other spiritual teachers. Create that amalgam. Create that gold, that, that gold composite of that hue of your reality. Right? Instead of always looking at it, where is it? What's going on? This doesn't look right. Look at everything through that, that, that composite. Create that composite that everything's working out, that it's unfolding perfectly. That the world and the universe and God is taking care of you. Right? That God has your back. This is how you shift and change your subjective tendencies, right, that we talk about, to see the gold or good in all reflections. You're not subject to any tendencies that you choose that are no longer serving you. Do you see it? You're not sabotaged or subject to anything that you consciously decide is no longer your choice. So create and shift and change your subjective tendencies to see the gold or the good in all reflections. Right in that mirror, right? Like the Venetian mirror, seeing that hue or that beautiful hue of reality or 3D conditions, right? Vadim Zeeland says, I see myself and I see reality. Wake up and create versus going unconscious and reacting, right? Being unconscious and reacting. Wake up versus being asleep and then reacting. The reality mirror always says yes as you wish. Remember, the reality mirror doesn't judge anything. It always says yes to you. But it won't smile until you do. So you can't go looking out there with a frown and expecting reality or the mirror to reflect that back to you. Stop reacting and trying to change, control, and coerce reality. And instead, create your relationship to reality as reality. We, we often say that, that you are reality. The mirror doesn't change, you do. The mirror doesn't change, you do. Stop chasing the reflection. Put your attention in the image on your self-concept. This is what Vadim Zeeland says, we think about things we do not want and we do not want the things we think about. Wow, powerful and a brilliant definition of negative attachment, right? That's a perfect definition of being attached to what we don't want, right? We, we think about those things and then we don't want the things that we think about. That's a brilliant definition, right? Instead, create your own amalgam. Everything's working out. Everything's, the God's got my back. It's all unfolding perfectly. Everything's perfect. Create that hue of your reality. That's a powerful suggestion. This brings us to mirror principle four. There are seven mirror principles. The fourth one, the mirror cites or reflects, cites or reflects the content, the content of your thoughts, feelings, assumptions, and beliefs, not the context. In other words, it, whatever you're thinking, feeling, and believing, whether it's something wanted or unwanted, whatever your self-concept is, it reflects that, not the context of what you really wanted, who you really are. Do you see? In other words, it doesn't judge the content as good or bad, or right or wrong, or possible or not possible, or try to determine your true intent, your true context. It reflects the image that you create. There it is without questioning it. It's that great subconscious. It doesn't create it. It's deductive. Even if you, your ideal or your context was something else, right? What you really desire was something else. So stop being attached to the reflection or the contents, right? Or the importance. Drop all that. Stop staring at, complaining about, trying to change and manipulate the reflection. But, and this is what Vadim Zillian says, end the chase after your own reflection. Like a little kitty where we're chasing our own reflection. End the chase. Then the image is no longer influenced by that reflection out there, by what you believe is a reflection out there. Now you're creating that image of what, from, from that higher knowing that this is who I am, this is what I desire to be, not based on the reflections, but based on the image that you create. That's powerful.
Mirror principle five, switch your attention from the reflection, from the content of reality, to the image or the context of your ideal, who you really want to be. This is what Vadim Zeeland says, I'm not running anymore. I'm standing still and watching reality come to me. Allow reality to come to you instead of chasing that reflection, trying to coerce and, and, and focusing on that reflection. Focus on the image. In other words, be still and know I am God. I love that. That's what Vadim Zeeland is saying here, even though he doesn't say that directly. Right? I'm not running anymore. I'm standing still and watching reality come to me. In other words, I'm standing still and knowing I'm the creator of my image. I'm the creator of my reality. This brings us to mirror principle six. Release your grip and allow the world to move with the alternative's flow. The alternative's flow, he's referring to all that is, all the possibilities, all the possible potential realities, all your identities, all images. Allow yourself to move with that along the path of least resistance. That's what he's really saying here. The paradox is by giving up control, you have total control. Right? Wake up as the actor in your own movie right? without resisting any parts of the movie. In other words, you're, while you're not resisting, while you're acting your part, while you're acting your role in that hologram or in that reflection, you're changing it. You're changing the movie. You're making your choice. And then the frames change. Right? That's how it works. Problems are not the norm because they require a greater expenditure of energy and nature never wastes energy. Vadim Zeeland. That's a beautiful definition of the path of least resistance. Right? That, that there are no problems. Right? That nature doesn't create problems. That would be resistance. It, doesn't, it always takes the path. It doesn't, it doesn't expend any extra energy. Right? That's, that's the perfect the, the perfect demonstration of all that is. It doesn't waste anything. It's always along the path of least resistance, right? That's powerful. That's mirror principle six. And then seven's the most powerful one, which we're going to get to in a few minutes. Remember, the 3D reflection is all part of the illusion. The things appear opposite or inverted in a mirror. That's part of making it seem real, right? It seems opposite. It seems real. Those opposites or that inversion of reality seems real. But what's real is the image on the other side of the mirror, you. Everything else is an inversion. Everything else is opposite of who you are. It doesn't matter how, how lofty the identity that you, you, you determine that you are. It's still an inversion. It's still an illusion. It's still an opposite of who you really are. Think of it that way. Right? Who you really are is beyond words. It's beyond imagination. It's, it's that divine being, right? But while, you he, while you're here, create the, the most ideal image you, you want to experience, right? Focus on your imagined end. Focus on your ends of what you want in your life. Mirror Principle 7 says this, and this is the most important and powerful one of all. Embrace any reflection as positive. Bashar talks about this. All of them, all of the spiritual teachers talk about this. Why? Because when you do, you change the reflection, right? When you do that, it changes the reflection. There's only you as your ideal, as your ideal. everything else that appears to contradict it, that is an elute, that, it, that, that is, it appears to be an inversion or an opposite of that truth of who you really are. I am that I am. Everything else appears to be that, that, Anything else that contradicts it is that illusion, is that inversion. It's that reflection that's not who you really are. It's all part of the game of life. It's all part of the mirror game, right? It's all yours by right of consciousness, of being consciously aware of who you desire to be right now, based on your true nature, your true identity, based on being aware of your I am awareness, your divine heritage, right, to take on any identity. All of it's part of the bridge because you are the bridge. You are the bridge of incidents. So everything unfolding is part of the bridge of incidents. There's no bridge of incidents out there. The you're, there's, no, there's nothing out there, not even the bridge. You are it. It's not about luck or confidence or deservingness or worthiness or blind faith or right or wrong. It's not about any of that, right? Everything is yours by right of consciousness, by your divine right. By you, by the right of your existence, everything is yours. But you, but, so it's up to you then to be aware of that, 
What you're aware of is reality. You create it all. The mirror always says yes, as you wish, but it won't smile until you do. Create your dream life by mastering the reality mirror. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, the ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash be something wonderful for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, our TikTok at be something wonderful and for being part of our membership channel. Uh, we have, uh, we just released a big membership video on the, on that channel ready for, if you're a member, check it out. If you're not, you can check out the link below. We also have a live stream planned for the be something wonderful membership channel. That's coming on uh, April 28th, 2024 at 9 a.m. in the morning, Sunday, the last Sunday of this month in April. I'm gonna to come to you live, addressing your questions and topics that you've been sending to us at info at besomethingwonderful.com. Be sure to join us. I'm gonna answer other questions that come up on the chat during, the, uh, during this live event as well. If you're a member, check it out. If you're not, check out the link below. Creators with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude, this is Tom Karen here in the studios of Be Something Wonderful. Until next time, we'll see you soon.